Hey everybody, this is Carissa. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Inky Fairy Designs. Today I am showing you how I created this cute card using the March subscription box from the Hedgehog Hollow. So let's just jump right into it. I have been obsessed with ink blending in case you haven't noticed. If you're following me on Instagram at Inky Fairy Designs, or seeing the videos here on my blog or, or, or on my YouTube channel or over on my blog. I just love ink blending. I have got the bug and it's a good one to have and I really love it. So I started uh, to create uh, this ink blended background using um, three colors of Distress Oxides. I end up pulling in a fourth one a little bit later, but I'm starting with Antique Linen. I am using my Picket Fence uh, life-changing blending brushes because I love them. This is the large one, and I have all different sizes, but I thought because I'm doing something overall on the entire card background, the large one would be perfect. And since I am staying in relatively the same color family, I am not changing my brush. I'm starting with the lightest color, which is Antique Linen. And you can see I am working on my glass media mat and I'm um, just pulling it in from the sides all the way towards the center, leaving the center quite light for the first uh, application of ink. Kept this portion in real time so you can kind of see how it goes. It's almost like coloring or watercoloring or any of those things where I tend to speed up the video just for time's sake and you can't really see like how it actually goes on. So now I'm coming in with squeezed lemonade. I wanted to brighten up the yellow um, just a little bit. The reason I chose these colors is because I'm going to be using the ruler stencil that you can see off to the right hand side. Uh, I'm going to be using that to create like a little ruler background type um, for the sentiment that I end up using. And I just, you know, rulers um, I tend to see as yellow, like my kids have yellow or wood, you know, grain rulers. So that was just the inspiration behind choosing this palette. Um, I'm not trying to make it look like a ruler. I'm not doing anything fancy. I just wanted to get some color on this background and then add my stencil on top. So here's the fourth color that I pulled in Gather Twig, or yeah, the fourth, the third color for this, and then I will stencil with black soot. That's why I have those. I didn't want to use Spice Marmalade. I didn't want to get orangey on this, so I thought just to give the edges a little bit more depth, I would pull in the gathered twigs, and that gave the look that I was going for. So here you can tell I've obviously sped this part up. Um, and I'm going to, once I get that gathered twigs, all along the edge like I want. I'm going to wipe off my brush a little bit on uh, a paper towel and then I'm going to soften it all down and blend it all together with antique linen one last time and then I'm going to pull it all the way into the middle. That middle will still stay lighter than my edges um, but I didn't want it to be white any longer so I just pulled that color all the way in. Now I'm going to do my stenciling in the background. I'm just basically using the stencil and the back and the ink blending to create my own pattern paper. So I um, adhered or I put some tape on the top of my panel and then I uh, taped down the stencil on top so it won't move. Now I'm using a smaller size blending brush and picking up that black soot and just rubbing it in through the lines on the stencil. And this worked out just exactly as I imagined it. It was the perfect uh, combination. I love the black through the stencils. It's very soft, um, yet, uh, you know, it, it, does, it does give me the contrast that I was looking for to create this background. So I'm just going to finish up and then 
move on, obviously. Um, yeah, so this is my first video for the Hedgehog Hollow. I announced it, I believe, on my Instagram and my blog that I have joined the Hedgehog Hollow design team. My first video I did film in the beginning of March. However, I was having issues with that footage. It ended up that I just needed to uh, update my iMovie program and then I was good to go. But I never did get that video created. So I will um, be live and by the time this video goes up that will be no longer live but you'll be able to go back and watch the replay of that card if you want to check that out. I'll leave a little I card here. So you can see I've used a simple stitched die to cut out my panel. Um, again, this is like my favorite die, but I have no idea what set it came from. So any stitched rectangle die would do. Here I pulled out my super cute new mini Misty. I absolutely love it. And I wanted to use the U Rule stamp set from the exclusively hand lettered stamp that is in this month's box. Uh, I didn't have room for it to all fit anywhere. I didn't plan this out, guys. This is what happens. I have an idea in my head, and then I just go with it. Um, so I didn't plan it out. And then I'm realizing, okay, so this isn't going to fit. However, uh, I have a trick to make it work. I'm going to put some tape on the part that won't fit. So I'm going to stamp you first. And I'm going to basically mask off the rule for now. And I'm using VersaFine Claire in Nocturne. And then once I get that nice and inked up, I'm going to remove the tape. That is very important. You want to remove the tape. And then I can stamp just the U. Once I clean off the stamp, I will move it down so that I can stamp the rule underneath that and kind of just over a little bit so I can get it to fit and this is a great way to get more use out of your stamps or you know if you're like me and you're like oh great I want to use this but it doesn't fit this is a way that you can get um, your sentiments to fit just by masking off the portions that you aren't ready to stamp and then um, removing that tape and, re and then you can stamp the rest of the sentiment so rather than cutting it up because this stamp I looked at it thought about cutting it up but it is very very close together and I just didn't have the confidence to do that I have been known to cut stamps off before but um, this is another way to get that to work so once I was happy with that I'm gonna pull in some uh, dark gray cardstock. It's not black. <clears throat> it kind of matches the black soot really nicely. And I'm going to heat emboss the sentiment that says, don't measure your progress against someone else's ruler. And you can see I'm just trying to line that up and I'm looking at it um, because I don't want my head to be in the video. So now I lift up my Misty and look at it because I have had a lot of footage where all you see is my messy hair because I don't brush my hair when I'm at home alone. <laughs> well, not really alone. I have like my whole family with me, but um, I have really short hair, so I just kind of like run my fingers through it and it looks really messy. Anyway, so now I lift it up and look at it that way. Once it's all lined up, I am going to heat emboss it with the Wow Embossing Powder Opaque Bright white super fine embossing powder and I'm going to use my wow embossing pad clear ultra slime slow drying ink pad um, first though because it is a very fine detail stamp I'm going to prep my paper with just some powder my powder tool this stuff I don't use it a lot because it's very smelly <laughs> I'll be honest but I really didn't want to uh, have to redo it so you know let's Let's do some prepping. You know, just prep. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stamp that down, and I am going to do it twice uh, just to make sure that it is nice and juicy when I apply the uh, 
embossing powder. So I'm going to do that again. That's the great thing about the Misties or any type of stamp positioner that you might have. So now I'm going to just sprinkle that on top. I've got my well-loved coffee filter underneath it to catch any of the excess that I can pour back into the bottle so we don't waste anything because we really don't want to be wasting our supplies. Um, so I can pour that back in and then heat set it. I am using my WOW uh, dual heat setting uh, heat tool. <laughs> and I heat it up from the back just to get it nice and warm. And then you can see I slow it down and let the powder melt. And it just looks so pretty uh, against that dark cardstock. I love it. Now I'm going to pull out my guillotine trimmer and line it up and try to get it nice and straight as I can and just cut that down. Um, I'm just really trimming it around the sentiment and so it will fit my card base. I wasn't doing anything fancy, just keeping it very nice and simple. So I'll make that next cut. Now I can add some adhesive to the back of that and I'm going to place it right above my U rule sentiment there. I just think this is a great card to send um, anybody to let them know that um, you're encouraging them and you believe in them and I know in this world of social media, we can get into that trap of looking at somebody else and thinking they have um, way more success than we do, but we have to stop that and it begins with us. And so I just loved this set for that reason. And I knew when I got this box that I had to make a card specifically using these two things and it's super cute if you don't get the stencil because I believe the stencil is like a little extra thing that you only get if you're actually signed up for um, three or more subscription boxes um, there is a ruler in one of the other stamp sets that you could just stamp it and create the same uh, look on the background so I've adhered it flat, I'm trying to think it needs a little bit of something. So I pulled out some stickles because I've been using the sequins, I think, way too much. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit. I was looking for my black, like, Nuvo drops, and apparently I don't have them. <laughs> so we'll have to fix that eventually. But I thought the unicorn stickles worked really well because it gives it a little bit of something something but it's not over the top it doesn't distract from the sentiment or the background or anything it just gives it a little bit some basically what these sequins would have done anyway it's just a little bit different um, and I liked the way that it turned out so just adding a few drops in different sizes here and there and that basically finishes off the card for today so I hope you enjoyed this card using the March subscription box from the Hedgehog Hollow. If you want to find out more about the subscription box, ugh, subscription box, check out the description below. I do have a link to it. There are different uh, subscriptions that you can sign up for monthly, three months, six months, whatever. And I think it's really fun. There are great products in it each month. You get everything to make cards stamp, do whatever it is you want. And we've got tons of inspiration for you each month from the design team over on the Hedgehog Hollow blog. So you won't be uh, at a loss of what to create. Thanks again so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of videos coming to you every week and I'm trying to do um, some more here while we have some time to hang out together. All right, guys, thanks so much again, and I hope you guys are all doing well. I will see you in the next video. Bye.